One of Pernon's treasures is her remarkable she or wine barrel room. It's a reminder of the domain's winemaking past. Her vines destroyed in the late 19th century during an outbreak of phylloxia. Who knows if one day winemaking will return to the chateau, but many of the fields around the domain still grow grapes today. This week we receive a call from a dear friend and highly regarded Loire Valley winemaker Fiona Beeston, inviting us to join her for the annual harvest. At Pernon we're always grateful for the help of others, so it's an honour to join her and play a small role in the production of her beautiful biodynamic wines. Les raisins étaient, euh, étaient des petits bijoux dont il fallait faire attention. J'avais pris la métaphore de, de l'accouchement avec Pablo à venir. Les vendanges, c'était comme le moment de l'accouchement. Chaque baie de raisin, chaque grappe, c'était le fruit d'un travail euh, très attentionné. Le raisin qu'on coupait devenait le vin qu'on allait boire. Et donc, euh, la, la qualité du raisin allait donner la qualité du vin, puisque de, dans le vin de Fiona, il n'y a que du raisin. Là, c'est le moment un peu critique où on va, on va, on va couper le raisin. Il faut faire attention aussi à ne pas mettre de feuilles dans votre seau. Euh, parce que les feuilles, ça ne fait pas du vin. De toute façon, quand vous avez un doute, vous goûtez. Et, euh, et vous verrez très facilement euh, quels raisins sont bons ou pas. Il y a le, les raisins pourris. Et là, il faut, il faut trier dans, sur la grappe. Vous enlevez les raisins qui sont mauvais. Si c'est possible de garder un morceau de la grappe, si toute la grappe est pourrie, il faut, faut la jeter par terre. Mieux vaut ne pas la prendre que prendre des raisins pourris dans le seau. Euh, voilà, ça c'est les raisins où il y a du pourri. It's actually been quite a stressful year because it's. I, f I feel we've been living in a hammam. I don't know if you oh, had yeah. that same feeling. Like it was a sudden rainfall and yeah. then really hot, and the vines aren't used to this weather. I mean, the weather is, has become chaotic. It's just been exhausting. So I took. I got fed up waiting for my grapes to ripen, and they looked fed up too. So that's when I decided we were going to pick two weeks ago before anybody else picked their red. And then afterwards, I thought, oh my God, what have I done? I should have held on, you know, this is mad. Why did I give in to the fact that it was cut? So today we're going to do one hectare, and then I have a little strip of vines that are over 100 years old. Seven little rows, which is spectacular. I love them. So this is the worst thing, it's, it, 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 the mould, so you have to flick it off. 
then that's okay the rest is okay there's another little moldy bit there the other is another little mold. i just slip off the left end This year, because there's been a lot of uh, humidity uh, during uh, all summer, and so the grapes are kind of uneven. There's a lot of rotten grapes that you have to sort out, but it's uh, it's just a, a few fruits within the grapes, so you have to be very careful. I started making wine in 2011 on this uh, wall vineyard that I bought. Um, so that was my first vintage and I immediately threw it into biodynamic. My job is to, I would say, accompany the soil and the grapes through their growing period. And that, that's the most difficult thing is not wanting to take tough decisions like I've done it, you know, I'm going to pick today and all that, that you really have to follow it through. Basically, it's like riding a horse without reins that you're trying to sort of, you know, steer it, but, you know, basically you're in the laps of nature and the weather. And this year was particularly difficult. I mean, all the wine producers I know were really just, we had no more uh, repair. We had no more, the seasons weren't what seasons used to be. Um, it rained when it wasn't meant to rain. It was far too hot. And the grapes really stressed out, and we did too. I have a horse that comes, and he's basically my weed killer. And I try and use the tractors less possible. A, I don't drive tractors because there are too many pedals and too many handles and things. It's really made by men for men. <laughs> I look at the weather websites 20 times a day. And now, as from today till the end of the year, I'm not going, I don't care if it rains or snows, that's it, I've done it. I must say the pickers did a great job in sorting out because there was a bit of mold in the vines. 
They did a great job actually sorting before they actually put the grapes in the, in the buckets. And now, um, so what we're doing, it's called the table de tri. And basically we're taking off um, bits, insects, bits of stems, bits of leaves, anything you really don't want to go into the wine. Then it goes down here where my daughter is de-stemming. And it was just a wicker basket that we had made. So it's actually a very soft process. It's quite vigorous, but it's, it's soft on the hands. And the idea is we don't want these stems in the wine because basically to make wine, I just want the grapes and I don't want this, this stem, which obviously tastes sort of woody. And uh, I know that in some regions where they don't have much acidity, probably in the hotter regions in the south, they use the stems because it gives the wine more structure but my wine has sufficient amount of structure without that. So that's what we're doing. We're taking off the, the stems, which then, once we've put it through the basket process, that's what it looks like. Once it's fermented, then uh, we take it down to the cellar, which is just down the way, and we put it in oak casks, and then it ages in the oak casks, depending on how the wine is tasting. I do it between a year and two years. <laughs> Don't forget, if you'd like to follow the restoration of Pernod more closely, we post a daily update in our Instagram stories. If you'd like to support the restoration project here at Pernod, we post an exclusive weekly video over on Patreon. Otherwise, just hit the subscribe button and we'll keep you updated here.